everything. Yeah, I know. Well, that's what, me, that's what reminded me. It's always those small <laughs> statements that remind me that I should be recording. <laughs> well, your head is really interesting. Okay. Well, <laughs> doesn't take much. <laughs> All right. I'm putting the link in the chat. I can find it. up Matt's link. Okay, here's a, the working document that I've been working with. Um, cool. Okay, so oh, I filled out um, a bunch of the success metrics and added a few strategies. Um, obviously, my main concern is that I I've not done one of these before, like build out a metric in terms of like building a standards document. And I could not find an end result um, because I don't think we've made any yet. So my big challenge here and question for everybody is, um, you know, it, does this look complete enough? And if not, what things are missing? I did have Toby do some feedback on it. So there's some work from him in here as well. Okay. But I'm worried, excuse me, I'm worried about completeness. I'm also kind of wondering if I use qualitative and in, in, cur in the correct way. Um, I think I did, but Why don't we all take like a couple minutes? I'm reading it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I could brainstorm a lot of other ways to think about this, measure it, parse it, but <clears throat> I think we're trying to get to a definition of the core. And I, mean, I had a few questions. I answered the one about lines of code. That was just me not being complete. So okay, you just changed it to lines of yeah. code. Yeah. Okay, you did that. Where I had where I had commits and merges and. I, I, I highlighted affiliation, diversity, and governance structure because I suspect that's a leading indicator for overall diversity. Like if I wanted to, and if I wanted to guess uh, how much engagement is going to 
be be garnered from multiple tech companies. I think if it's a very small set of people, like one organization or two that govern the project, that it, the likelihood that other organizations are going to commit to it, I think becomes low, you know, is, is less likely to happen in the future, would be my right. guess. So I think that's a really useful metric. Yes. So should that be, can we, is that a, a, I agree, and I think it should be in there as a, I guess, as a qualitative metric? Mm -hmm. Okay. Although we can, quanti we can quantify it, it's just we have to take work to quantify it, right? Right, you'd have to break it down. You'd have to, like, say, I have to identify the governance structure, you know, mm -hmm. are they run by a tech board, are they run by a, uh, yeah. you know, board board? <coughs> There's a whole bunch of things. I can't pull it straight out of Git. Right. Would you would you consider like code ownership as sort of falling in within that uh, governance structure question? Like, is it is it like an open source project that's owned by a company versus one that's independent? Or what do you mean owned by a company? So the copyrights are all yeah the copy like so the copyright oh. are all to like Facebook or Google or something like that versus copyrighted to the cohesive whole or multiple copyright holders? Um, yeah. I, I, on the surface level, on the surface level, I would say yes, John. Mm -hmm. um, the, the thing about it is though, I, well, I, I don't, I don't know if it would always be an indicator of community health and diversity. Um, because just because like, so Red Hat owns all the copyrights for Fedora, but we are only, and this always surprises people, our employees are only at about 15% of participation, I think. Mm. Um, you know, we, I think the number is a little higher because the way we've been finding that is we're fine tuning the methodology. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so yes, it could be in there, but I, I, I don't know. There might be enough contraindications. I'm not sure it would be useful. I, I, think, I think Sean's point about the governance model is certainly that might be more of a tell in there. Yeah. I think I think you have sort of a point in there. I mean, I think that's maybe a useful tidbit, but I mean, irregardless of who owns it, if the governance is, yeah. you know, designed to be more broad versus like corporate owned governance, that's that's probably more of the indicator than the yeah. copyright. Because I'm going down the list of all the projects that we have and um, we, yeah, it, it it's a problem with a lot of our, projects that don't have enough diversity because our governance is all red hat. Yeah. You know, and it shows up. But but again, not always. Fedora seems to be the, the counter uh, counterpoint to all this because everybody on the Fedora Technical Council is a red hat employee because um, it just came up in our elections because people were upset about that. All right. I somehow accidentally erased John's <laughs> uh, comment i was trying to reply to it and it decided to go the other way on you go into the comments thing up at the top and reopen it yeah. oh okay there we, okay good i didn't know that existed yeah oh yeah <laughs> perfect perfect sorry um i mean i i'm not against throwing it in there i mean to me data is data and yeah. and there's always you can always say there's a counter example for everything I mean, the only thing that I, the, the only reason this really becomes very interesting to me is because we're starting to see a, a higher number of tech um, M&As happening and even of larger organizations. I see this especially on the data, big data world. And I'm, I'm wondering if there could be interesting before and after sort of snapshots of that and whether that has impact on community diversity and growth and things like that. Well, I guess it's more of a hypothesis. To live that nightmare um, <laughs> <laughs> um, every day. Let right? me get yeah. back to you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, no, that I think that's a valid point, and 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 I wanted to kind of I, I wanted to also address your thing. 
I mean, affiliated and co-owned companies. <sighs> yes. Um, uh, but boy, good luck tracking that down. It's a tricky it's, one. Well, I mean, I know we manage it. We try like a lot of the foundations I work with. We ma we try to manage that just from a a diversity perspective of making sure that you know you don't have you know one affiliated group of companies dominating the governance structure. But and that's even sort of tricky because you're sort of relying on them to be honest about it. Well, relying or, on them to be honest about it and relying on, yeah, and... and, and or even knowing half of the time, because some of these people don't even know. Right. So, right. And again, I keep falling back on what I know. You know, eventually, I be, we will be a wholly owned subsidiary on I, uh, with IBM. And we're wrestling with, okay, so how do we represent ourselves on foundation boards? Do we maintain our thing or are these... Or should we just let IBM do it if they're already on the board already? Or, are, you know, maybe the foundations will just decide for us. Even though we are committed to being a completely independent body. Yeah. Um, but foundations are going to have to believe that, you know? Yeah, um, and that's a case-by-case case thing that's I do in a lot of how, cases, yeah. Right. So how do you measure that is, I guess, my point. No, I mean, I think it's a very fair point because I think also, I, I think to your point, co-own affiliated probably has different meanings for every single organization scenario. Like if I go back to the Pivotal, VMware, all of that, I think there was probably a little bit more cross mingling where it sounds like the Red Hat IBM, it does sound like there's going to be a ton of independence. Yeah, that's, I mean, we're, that's what we're hoping. Yeah. I, I think... And, and I think as far as measurability, I don't know if there's any way to do that. I, I mean, I guess you could take the first level measure and say, okay, these, all these people work for VMware. Yeah. But then you're going to have to say, okay, well, what division of VMware are they working with? And how tight is that in with Pivotal and blah, blah, blah. And, and now Bitnami's in there. You know, yeah. I mean, there's a whole... Yeah. Things get kind of messy and there's just so probably just a ton of context. Like you couldn't, I guess your point is, is like, and I agree, you can't compare one situation to another. Well, okay. Right. So hold on. We might be overthinking this. True. Why don't, but if I'm the community manager in VMware, I know all this stuff already. If I go in and say, oh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of VMware people and Pivotal people in here, like say there's a mix, I can be determinant and say, yes or no, that's healthy, right? So we, the software tool maker, metric maker, we don't really have to judge that on that level because that person could make the argument either way and say, well, yeah, we're... 45% VMware and 45% um, Pivotal mm -hmm. to an outsider that looks like you're very diverse because you've got two big players in there, but really it's only one. Right. Yeah, right. My, my comment was if um, with affiliation and diversity, it's like, okay, how many CFOs does it take to kill the project? If you have eight companies, but they're all subsidiaries of the same entity, then you've got one CFO who can cut it all off. So I think to the question that um, uh, John had about, you know, how many, how do we count affiliated cone companies? I think that's, that's important that we keep track of that to the extent we can. Yeah. Yeah. But I think you're right. It's like, it's not a, there, there's one half of keeping track of it. And then there's another yeah. half of like understanding, okay, well, what does this metric mean in real life? And the, yeah. the they're going to really, well, it's context. Yeah. yeah, a lot of it's context, and you also have to see of like who the reader is going to be to put it in. Like if it's right. if it's like your if it's like the VMware you know uh, open source programs office, right? They're going to know the context of how to read this and how to appropriately whatever. Mm -hmm. If it's Cloud Foundry or CNCF or someone like that, they're going to know the context of mm -hmm. probably how the reader or how they would discuss it as well. Right. Um, 
So, yeah. And really, it's just probably just a grouping. So it's almost like, okay, just add these two together, or add these three together and call them one in certain cases. So, yeah. 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 I mean, it might be a useful thing just to mark to the tools makers to say, hey, you have some sort of an option to, you know, group group to get together, but yeah. yeah. That would be it. Yeah, that could be a thing. I could see that. Yeah. This is all, this 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 is the place that always fascinates me is like where does our job end and where does you know community managers begin? True. You know, and this is this is the part where you know doing a metric is interesting to me because I don't know where we stop. Yeah, I, I'm always in the here are the the items that we recommend you take a look at, and that's the that's our stop. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably a good approach. Yeah. And then how you read them and react to them is <laughs> we can't, there's no way we can do that. No. Okay, so, so this is organizational affiliation is the metric. Right. It's, it's a composite metric, clearly, that can be understood from a variety of different perspectives. That's how I read this. Right. And so, and some of these are obviously kind of individual metrics themselves. So like number of commits by each organization, and that's just a metric. Yeah. You know, like a, um, so the question that I would have is, do, are these, just looking at the quantitative list, are these low level metrics or, you know, these activity metrics sufficient to capture organizational affiliation? And again, organizational affiliation is what is the organizational diversity of contributions? Right. I, I, I think so. I think it's enough for people to apply their own context to make sense of what it all means. Okay. Right. Because I could take any, mm -hmm. I could take a combination of the quantitative list and then I could come up with the elephant factor. Because exactly. that's a exactly. second level. That's a second level metric that I can just say, okay, boop, that's, that's, that's something I can just do. I mean, the metaphor I have in my head is these are all Lego blocks. Yep. And I snap them together and I can make one thing. And then yep, some are bigger. Yep. Totally agreed. It's a good metaphor, actually. I might steal that. Okay. $5. Five dollars. <laughs> Or a trademark suit for Lego if you put it in print. You better anywhere. be quick. You better get that trademark out. <laughs> Lay claim to this. Although yeah. we are recording it, so therefore, you, you uttered it, so you're automatically copyright holder of it, correct? Okay, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Is that how it works? I don't I think know. You have to, I think you have to publish something and for it to be copyrighted. Okay, so, but is that, so in my head, that's what a qualitative metric was. It was a second level, higher level metric. No, a qualitative metric is like, you have to go, you personally have to go out into the field. Oh, okay. You, think, yeah. you need to talk to people. Okay. That's, that's what it is. So all the ones you marked as qual, are probably should be down in the. Quant. Yeah, because if they're just an assemblage of other pieces that can just be calculated, they're all quant. Right. Yeah. Right. And they are. So I'll move them. Like, um, your one about influence, the second one under qualitative, influence of an organization in an ecosystem. Yeah. I don't think there's any trace data that can, you, you need to get out there and ask people. Right. Does, does Red Hat have huge amounts of influence in this project? Yes, done. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just have to ask people. And I think after, if you ask, you know, say 40 or 50 people, 
than Fedora. So like you had mentioned that, that Fedora, if I heard you right, Red Hat is a, contributes 15% looking just at the, if you looked at the commits, I'm guessing, yeah. on the code base. But then you could also ask the question is, you know, what's the level of influence <laughs> that Red Hat carries on Fedora? Right. And given that our governance, you know, we have all Red Hat people in most of the governance um, uh, positions very high. Yep. And so, right, you might get a different story if you ask people versus just looking at the quantitative metrics. Yeah. Um, the other one, and I don't know, John, and maybe Brian, you can chime in on this. Do you care about things like um, stewards of projects? So for example, let's say in the case of Fedora again with Red Hat, I would suspect that Red Hat is kind of considered to be a steward of this project. Yeah, and that's usually my definition, like when um, John was talking about who owns the copyright and who owns it, to me, they're synonymous. Okay. You own the copyright, and, you you know, then you are the steward. Because so, then you could, you could also obviously have those big, like, drive-by dumps. Uh, that if you happen yeah. to do a... Yeah, to what, like... To what do you mean? Oh, well, so an organization came in and did a large contribution of code, and you happen to be sampling at that moment. Uh huh. That they may actually appear as a core contributor, but the reality is they're not. Right. So, um, I mean, classic example maybe when Microsoft dropped Hyper V into the kernel years ago. <clears throat> I wouldn't, right. not have, I, not, I wouldn't have called Microsoft a uh, real steward of the kernel <laughs> at that point. No. But they, but they appeared in the top 10 for that year when they dropped Hyper-V. But, but, but they're not, by your definition, would ever be considered a steward of the kernel. No, I know. But if I'm looking at some of these, these things. The Linux Foundation is the steward. So I mean, you're kind of, so I guess it's interesting to discuss the steward because I think we're trying to get into a discussion of defining it now. And yeah. it sounds like there's, what I'm hearing is maybe two lines of thought. One is a steward of an organization that provides something quantifiable, but code contributions might be a minor piece of that and there might be bigger pieces of it. Yeah. And then another way to look at it sounds like you have a great, a, a large ownership stake in the code base itself. Am I, am I capturing sort of some of the, the, the themes that we were using the word Stuart, right? Yeah, yeah. but. I mean, yeah, the Microsoft case that you describe is more of a drive by, right? Yeah, 100%. But, well, okay, but getting to that example, though, see, there's another thing complicating this in that the, the governance model or the, the workflow of the project itself is going to dictate because if Microsoft had dumped 40% of new kernel code in that year, they didn't, right? But even hypothetically, 40%, 50%, 60%, it doesn't matter because the governance model and the workflow of the kernel itself is that Linus Torvalds approves everything, sure. <laughs> right? There's yeah, no, it doesn't just flow in there. The maintainer model and dictates that it's going to be Linus who does it. And sure. he works for the Linux foundation who, by the way, co-own um, or co-manage the trademarks. So yeah. is, that, is that a governance model though? That's is not well. A... I'm saying the wrong thing. It's whatever. Yeah. It's whatever you call it, the maintainership model. It's yeah. the typical workflow. I would say, but yeah. So I think of governance as being people are on the board. So right. if I, I'm guessing if I looked at the board of the Linux Foundation, it's made up of people from a diverse number of technology companies. But sure. I've never looked. Sure, so, but, then, but then you have, but see, now we've got another complication. Does it matter? Does it matter <laughs> that Red Hat is on the board um, and all these other companies are on the Linux Foundation board? Does, does Linus Torvalds give a crap? I don't think so. He doesn't. doesn't. 
yeah. really affect the software development or the community. I mean, in an ideal world, it shouldn't because boards are really there to make sure like the fiduciary stuff is like taken care of um, and maybe a touch of strategy, but really the technical communities are driving where the technology direction is. But in an ideal world, that also opens the other question of in a non-ideal world when that split doesn't happen, um, is, is that an impact? So the, well, another way that I might look at this is that if, so, so I think the boards, I mean, I don't know, I'm not very into the Linux Foundation board, but I think, for example, when something like Kubernetes came along and there was an industry strategy, I don't think the technical team, the maintainers had any role in not letting that project take off. I think the board allocated resources, time, support for something that was strategically a shared interest for the Linux, and maybe Linux Foundation is really too big of a scope, but but I think the board does get to choose where the resources are directed and that does affect what people work on. That is yeah. true. And, and, and the problem is, is, and I always get yelled at for this one, <laughs> I don't really think the Linux kernel is a valid community in, 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 the, in the scope in which we are talking. Right. It's inertial at this point. Well, it, <laughs> it never did. It was never meant to be a community. It was a bunch of technical people getting together to create a project, you know, and the only thing they did was build infrastructure to facilitate communication. So they built mailing, you know, they, they brought in mailing lists. They, you know, they, they fricking built Git, you know, but then that was it. Um, you know, the Linux Foundation came along after the fact. Something like Kubernetes was started as a groundswell, this is a really cool project, we ought to get involved in this. And then much earlier on in that, the, the companies and the foundations decided to form around it and build a community. My, this is a terrible thing to say. My litmus test is there where there's, there aren't really stickers for the Linux kernel. <laughs> why are there no stickers? There it's are no stickers, stickers for the Linux kernel. You think about that for a minute. How many <laughs> Kubernetes stickers are there and how many Kubernetes sub project stickers are on there? No, you're right. A lot of you stickers know? for Kubernetes. We've yeah. got Tux and Tux came along as a whim and isn't even really officially affiliated with the Linux Foundation. Oh, let me, so I, I didn't put the sticker comment in the notes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I run this theory by and people yell at me. No, I'm not yelling at you. No, no it's fine. So it's a good I, point. I mean, because I think stickers all of a sudden create affiliation, although you can make the argument that Linus just probably thinks stickers are stupid. And right. so you have that but, thing but, there. But, me, what I'm saying is they never had just, a community. Well, so when we use the yeah. kernel as, a, as an example, it might not be the best example. That's all I'll I'm, just, yeah, I'll just send point. a note to the kernel mailing list and ask. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I'm recording this. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, then some folks are going to get a laugh. All right. Um, <laughs> My, I think on the right, right now with organizational affiliation as a metric, personally, I think this is pretty well worked out and represents something that could be a candidate metric. I think to me, I think it's fine. And, and I mean, this is for version one, right? So yeah. the question would be, can this change from version two? Of course it can. So does this begin to capture how organizational affiliation is better understood. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think, hmm. I think between the work that Brian, who'd you work with on this, Brian? Was well, it? Toby, Toby oh, put in. Toby. Um, That's right. Yeah. Well, a lot of this was borrowed from the original document that Toby created and I okay. helped him with, and then we kind of flipped roles. I put this together and then he commented on this. Okay. Well, I'd recommend, you know, that we kind of bring this, to the common group, you know, I could. That's us. That's us. Yeah, well, or like bring it up next Thursday. I know that's us. Maybe right. I was thinking on in particular. Yeah. Um, well, given that it's free state next Thursday, yeah. 
Maybe we could open. Yeah, we well, could maybe nice. could Ocean op open an issue and assign it to Don and ask for her thoughts. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, I would be especially like. I think the objectives are fairly clear. Um, I'm not sure if I was on the line uh, on the right lines with strategies, because um, those look like tactics to me. But I think that's okay. Okay. Well. <clears throat> Yeah, it, it, th I'm, I'm having a little bit of a, I don't know what I don't know here. That's, that's why I'm hesitating with some of this stuff. I guess the way I'm looking at it is, is, um, is this bringing organizational affiliation to a finer point to help people understand how they should think about organizational affiliation? Yes. And the answer is yes to me looking at this document. And I think that's what version one really yeah. supports. I don't, about. Right. I, yeah. Okay. Well, we've definitely, I would agree we've made progress in that direction. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to put an issue in here. Um, uh, okay. Thanks for helping me with this. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. That's why we're having the, this is a working meeting. That's why exactly why we're doing this. Well, no, but I'm still being polite, Sean. I know. Sorry. It's not my nature to be polite. So I was just, I'm always shocked when people are. <laughs> I'm completely kidding, but. Uh -huh. Okay. I just, I put it, I'm going to put an issue and I'm just going to ping Don and Georg on this one. Yeah, that's a good, good set of people. Okay. okay. Done. If I go back to our um, agenda here, just on one of these tabs that I've been diverted from. Uh, have we, let me see what else we haven't talked about. I feel like we've talked about two metrics for sure. We've talked about organizational affiliation. We've talked about geography. And I think responsiveness metrics was the third topic. <clears throat> wow, somebody's got great birds. Not me. That might be me, my window's open here. Oh, it's, I'm not complaining, I like this. <laughs> yeah, it's calming. Yeah, it is. It's better. It's better than the the, 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 the kids downstairs. So that's that's a plus. Be better. <laughs> okay. Um, did did anybody have? Do we have someone working on um, the the responsiveness metrics? No, I'm not. I'm I'm not, and I. I mean, the responsiveness metrics are also being covered in evolution and um, risk right now. So I mean, we have two. One is time to close. I'm looking at the spreadsheet. Time to close and time to first response. And those are both evolution metrics. Do they exist in evolution? They they're defined in evolution, and I'm not <clears throat> I'm not sufficiently aware of where the evolution group is at because I don't think they met yesterday. Uh, no, I don't think so either. So the question is, I mean, I think they're useful metrics to define. Um, they're living in those repos. If we think they're important, then we could ping that group and ask them, or we could just take them on. I mean, I'm, it depends how critical we think they are. And if we have the bandwidth to take that on. 
because I know the discussions within the evolution working group are different than the discussions in this working group in terms of the granularity of how they want to define that. Okay. I mean, I don't have, an, I don't have a strong opinion. I'm kind of throwing it out there for us to all consider. And there's four of us on the call. My plate's pretty full leading up to the um, release of metrics. So I don't, I don't feel I can take on responsiveness. Uh, all right, well, I'll, I'll take a look at it. Yeah. I don't want to be wrong here, but wasn't Georg looking at that or? I, I don't think, yeah, I think somebody was. I even thought maybe. I do, I do too. That's why I thought to take a make an inquiry to that group. Can you look at the version? Can you find the document and look at the oh, yeah. history? I can. Let me do that. There's an issue on it. Open issue, issue response I time. I actually is. think maybe <laughs> this issue response time does have um you know it's not complete but it is it has some information in it where are you looking sean i'm in the evolution working group under okay. i can send you the link to the yeah can you just put it in the chat yep absolutely to the root page as it were so this will give you a list of their focus areas. And then I want, on, or I'm sorry, this is a list of their issue resolution ones. And um, they have issue resolution time, closed issue res resolution efficiency, which is not at all defined. Um, and I should look in the pull requests as well. Yeah, no, there's nothing in the pull requests uh, that says that they're working on those right now or that somebody submitted a change. Okay, and we don't, okay, I'll, um, maybe I'll, what I'll do is I'll just tack on to the issue that Daniel opened up. So there's this issue Issue resolution efficiency is issue 134 in the working group, not working group. In the common working group. Oh, so okay. He, I think two weeks ago, discussion of responsiveness metrics. I see. So I'm just going to post something in, uh, like a response. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay. Okay, I just put a small, like, ping in there. really fast. Okay, done. Those are the things that were on the agenda. I don't know if we have other items that need to be brought up. I don't. I mean, we're at the end of the hour anyway. Oh, wow. Yes, we are. All right, cool. All right. All right, that, um, that's about what she wrote. Great. All right, I'll see some of you next Tuesday. I'll see you next week. I'll see you next uh, Tuesday. And um, if we get in early, I'll let you know. But right now, I don't think I will. All right. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.